Hey there everybody, my name is Madison, I'm a marine educator, and I'm a new volunteer with Project Piaba. Today I'm going to be taking you folks through a fun little activity to demonstrate sustainable fishing and what that looks like in the pet trade. As you might know, at Project Piaba we support the sustainable fisheries down there in the Rio Negro, but a lot of people don't really know what sustainable fishery means. So for this activity, we are gonna get some hands-on experience about what it means to collect sustainably for the pet trade. We're gonna use some imagination and some everyday household items. Just a heads up, this activity does involve some math, addition and subtraction. So if that is over your head, now would be a good time to pause the video and grab a grown-up or some other math whiz in your life who can help you out with that. This activity also does require quite a bit of imagination. So if you are an adult doing this by yourself, you might want to grab a kiddo to help you out with that. Today, we're going to be pretending to be imaginary fisher people, collecting two different species of fish from two different ecosystems. One of them will be the Cardinal Tetra, also known as the Piaba, which is found and collected in the Rio Negro in Brazil. The other species will be the Bengai cardinal fish, which is another very popular aquarium fish that's found and collected in the waters around Indonesia. So these are two real places, two real species, but we're going to use our imaginations uh, and some household supplies to pretend to be fisher people. So what you're going to need for this activity are two plates one to represent each of those ecosystems, the Rio Negro and Indonesia. You will also need a small bowl or other container to represent your boat. And of course, every fisher person needs some fishing gear. Now your fishing gear is a little bit up to you. Uh, if you would like this to be an easier activity, I would recommend a spoon, if you're in this for a challenge, I would recommend something a little more challenging to use, like chopsticks, which is what I'll be using today. And of course, you will also need some fish. So to represent our fish today, I'll ask you folks to get two different dry snacks. I'll be using cashews and cranberries, but any sorts of dry snacks you have in your house should be fine, as long as you can tell the difference between the two, because one of them will represent each species of fish. So you might need a little time to gather these things uh, and bring them to your station. So if you need some time to gather your materials, uh, you can pause the video and do that now. All right, now that we all have our supplies, it's time to populate our ecosystems. So choose one of your plates to be your Indonesia and pick one snack, I'm choosing the cranberries, to be those Bengai cardinal fish. Then take 10 of that snack, count them out, and put them on your Indonesia plate, like so. The other plate will be your Rio Negro plate. Your other snack will be your Cardinal Tetras. So take 10 of that snack and place them onto your Rio Negro plate. Now let's take a little time to practice being imaginary fishermen. Grab your fishing gear, whichever tool you've chosen, the way that you collect a fish is to safely pick up that fish and put it into your boat. So why don't we practice a little bit? Let's say, let's take three fish from each ecosystem, ecosystem and put them into our boats. Once you've completed that task, you are ready to be a real imaginary fisherman. So if you need a little more practice, you can pause the video now and take that time. All right, now that you've had some time to practice, it's time to go on our first real imaginary collecting trip. So your goal for this collecting trip is to make $100. That's the goal. Now, these different species of fish are worth different amounts of money on the market. So those Bengai cardinal fish in Indonesia each one of those fish that you get into your boat is worth $10. Put that right here so we don't forget. Each one of these cardinal tetras from the Rio Negro is worth $5 if you get it into your boat. 
So remember, your goal is to get $100. So now it's time to make a plan. How many fish do you want to collect from each ecosystem? You can make your own plan if you like doing math or if you have a grown up there to help you. But if you don't want to make your own plan, you're welcome to follow my plan. If you do want to make a plan, now would be a good time to pause the video, grab a pen and paper, and get that plan down in writing. So I'll give you some time to do that. For those of you not creating your own plan for this first trip, here is my plan. Because the Bengai cardinal fish are worth twice as much as those cardinal tetras, I want to collect 10 Bengai cardinal fish, reaching my $100 goal, and zero cardinal tetras, since if I collect 10 Bengai cardinal fish, I don't need any more fish to reach my goal. So that's my plan. I've got 60 seconds on my timer and I'm ready to go. So if you wanna follow along with me, use my timer, grab your fishing gear, get ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, I have reached my goal. I have 10 Bengai cardinal fish in my boat, but there's still some time left on the clock. So if you're still fishing, I will hold my timer up to the screen and you can see how much time you have left. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, fishing gear down. Did you reach your goal? I reached mine. If you reached yours, congratulations. You had a successful collecting trip. If you didn't reach your goal, don't worry. We're not real fisher people, and these are just snacks. Now that our collecting trip is finished, we're in the off season. So we're at the markets, selling our fish, and making a living. You can simulate this by eating the snacks in your bowl. While fishermen are selling their fish on the market, the fish in the wild are busy reproducing, which means having babies. Now, different types of fish reproduce at different rates, meaning some fish have more babies more quickly than other types of fish. So we're gonna simulate that in this activity with some quick math. If you need a math helper, you can call them over now. So the first thing you're going to do is count the number of Bengai cardinal fish you have left on your Indonesia plate. For every two fish you have on your plate, you can add one more. Now, if you followed my plan, what's our problem? We don't have any Bengai cardinal fish left. What mistake did I make when I made my plan for our collecting trip? I didn't think about the fact that there needs to be at least two fish left in order for them to reproduce and have babies so we can collect them again the next season. This is actually a pretty common mistake. It's called overfishing. Overfishing is something that happens to a lot of species that are considered really valuable because everybody wants them and too many people collect them too quickly and then they can't have enough babies to reproduce. So, oops, that's a pretty big mistake. Now, in the wild, we wouldn't really be able to correct it, but since this is a game, if you made the same mistake I did or followed my plan, you can go ahead and put two Bengai cardinal fish back on your plate just for the purposes of the game. But let's remember not to make that same mistake next time. Remember, we need at least two Bengai cardinal fish on our plate to get even one more the next season. Now let's turn our attention to our cardinal tetras in the Rio Negro. Now, this is a species that actually reproduces a lot faster. So to simulate that, count the number of cardinal tetras you have left on your Rio Negro plate. If you followed my plan, 
you should have 10. Now for every one cardinal tetra that you have on your plate, you can add two more to your plate. So if you followed my plan, that means count out 20 more cardinal tetras, put them on your plate, and at the end of that, you should have 30. So take some time to do that now. Now you might be wondering, why do these two plates look so different? Well, as I mentioned, different fish reproduce at different rates. In other words, some types of fish have a lot more babies more quickly than other types. Bangai cardinal fish reproduce slowly, which is why we don't have a lot of them on our plate. But cardinal tetras reproduce very quickly and in great numbers. Why? Well, it all has to do with the ecosystem that they live in. Every year, the Amazon River floods its banks and covers a huge part of the surrounding forest floor. When that happens, the cardinal tetras have a ton of babies that can go out and find all the food they need there in the forest. Now, they have to do that because when the dry season comes, most of those baby fish get stuck in little pools on the forest floor and they won't make it back to the river to reproduce the next season. This is what we call a boom and bust ecosystem. The population booms during the rainy season and it busts during the dry season. Make sense? All right, now that you know a little bit more about these ecosystems where you're fishing, it's time for our second collecting trip. So it's time to make another plan. Now our goal is the same, to make $100 from the fish we collect on this trip. But now that you know more about the reproduction in the ecosystem and how the populations work, are you going to change your plan? I know I am, I have to. I only have two Bengai cardinal fish in my ecosystem, so I can't possibly take 10. Now, just like last time, if you want to, you can follow my plan and I'll tell it to you in a second. But if you want to make your own plan, go ahead, pause the video now and take some time to get that plan down on paper. So here's my new plan. I'm going to take a larger number of the cardinal tetras, since I know that they reproduce so much faster, and I still want to catch one Bengai cardinal fish. So to reach my $100 goal, I want to catch one Bengai cardinal fish and 18 cardinal tetras. I still only have 60 seconds to do it, but I think I can do it. If you think you need more time, feel free to put a little more time on your timer. All right, we have 60 seconds on the clock. If you wanna follow my timer, get ready. Grab your gear, three, two, one, go. All right, I did reach my goal in under 60 seconds, but we still have some time on the clock. So I'll hold that up again so you can see how much time you have left. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, fishing gear down. Now it's time for the off season again. So remember, the first thing we have to do is count the fish that we have caught in our boat and see if we've reached our goal. So you can pause the video now and take some time to do that. So for this second off season, feel free to once again, sell your fish on the market by snacking on your snacks. And let's see how our populations are doing in our ecosystems. Now remember, to repopulate Indonesia, you add one new Bengai cardinal fish for every two that are on the plate. Now, if you followed my plan, you'll notice we've made another mistake. Even though I took less Bengai cardinal fish, I still don't have enough in the ecosystem to get the populations back up to a healthy level. 
I should have paid more attention to science when I was making my plan. Now let's look at the Rio Negro. Count the number of cardinal tetras you have left on your Rio Negro plate. If you followed my plan, you should have 16. Now remember, for every one cardinal tetra on our plate, we can add two more. Now that is a lot of cardinal tetras. If you do the math, that would mean I would have to add, I would have to get 48 cardinal tetras onto my plate. Don't worry, I'm not gonna actually count out 48 cardinal tetras onto this plate, and you don't have to either. Because, remember, in the boom and bust ecosystem, there is a bust. During the dry season, a lot of those cardinal tetras don't make it back to reproduce. So you can just keep adding cardinal tetras to your plate until you get up to the number 30. We will call that a stable and healthy population in the Rio Negro. That would be the population level that is naturally there as a result of the natural regulation in the ecosystem. So now it's time for our third collecting trip and we are armed with more practice and a lot more information about these ecosystems that we are collecting in. So are you gonna change your plan? I am definitely going to change mine. I am going to finally learn my lesson and leave those Bangai cardinal fish alone. I'm gonna focus on the cardinal tetras because I know that they reproduce so quickly. So how many cardinal tetras do I need to catch to make $100? five dollars each that means I'm gonna to need to collect 20 so that's my new plan if you want to make your own plan you can pause the video and take some time to do that now now that we have our plans in place it's time to get collecting so I've got 60 seconds on my timer get your fishing gear ready three two one go It's 20 for me, and we still have some time left on the clock. All right, that sound means fishing gear down. It's time to see if we've reached our goal. So once again, take some time to, to uh, count the fish that you have in your fishing boat and see if you reach the goal that you set for yourself. So now we're selling our fish on the market and of course those fish in the wild are reproducing again. So let's see how our populations are doing, starting with those Bengay cardinal fish. Count how many Bengay cardinal fish you have left on your plate and remember, for every two on your plate, you can add one more. Now, if after doing this, you have 10 or more Bengay cardinal fish there on your plate in your ecosystem, congratulations, you have officially gotten that ecosystem back up to stable and healthy population levels. That's gonna make for a very healthy ecosystem, and of course, it's really good for that species, the Bengay cardinal fish. Now, if you followed my plan, or made similar mistakes that I did, you'll still have just one Bengay cardinal fish in your ecosystem. And that can be a lesson for why it's so important to take science into account when we're making those plans. Now let's turn our attention back over to those cardinal tetras. Count how many cardinal tetras you have on your plate. And remember, for every one, you can add two more. Now if you followed my plan, you should have 10 left on your plate. So as we add two for every one, 
we get those populations right up back to 30. And remember, 30 is what a healthy and stable population of cardinal tetras looks like naturally. That means this third plan, we actually only took as many cardinal tetras as would naturally die off during the dry season, meaning we had a neutral impact on the population. We only took as many fish as would naturally have been gone. So that's really good. We maintained a healthy and stable population and what's more, we reached our goal. We made that $100. And if we were real fishermen down in the Rio Negro, we would need that $100 to take care of ourselves and our families. So this is what it looks like when humans and nature work in harmony, and when a fishery takes science into account and respects the ecosystem that they are working with. And that's what the real fisher people do down in the Rio Negro, where we support them with Project Piaba. This type of fishing, of collecting, that takes real science into account and respects the ecosystem, that's called sustainable fishing. And that's what we mean when we say we at Project Piaba support the sustainable fisheries of the Rio Negro. We want these people to be able to continue fishing in the way they have for generations and protecting the environment that they work with. So I hope you had some fun during this activity. Maybe you got a better understanding of why we care so much about these funny little fish and the people who collect them down in Brazil. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the content that Jackie and Tori have been putting out for Project Piava. Uh, we will see you next time for the next video. Have a nice day. Thanks for that activity, Madison. That was really fun. So it is a really important thing to think about within fisheries with you know how much different fish are worth and how much um, how susceptible different types of fish are to overfishing because of their biological processes. And one of the things that's really important with Project Piaba is to think about how sustainable these fisheries are. And most of the fishes that are in the Rio Negro, because of the way that the population cycles work with the flood and the drought system in the Amazon and in the Rio Negro, is that a lot of these fisheries are very, very sustainable. They're very resilient to overfishing because basically those fish that the fishermen are catching are not some of the fish that would be repopulating the next season. So that's really important to think about. And I'm so glad that Madison pointed that out with this activity. So um, another thing that's really important to think about is that the, the fisheries that we used for this activity um, were really just to show different types of fisheries in different parts of the world because there are a lot of different places where fish come from that are important not just in you know food fish but in the aquarium trade. So those Bengay cardinal fish come from Indonesia, those cardinal tetras come from the Rio Negro. It's not like a fisherman can choose between you know which ones he wants to do because these fisheries are done by local people. So people who live in the Rio Negro are fishing for Rio Negro fishes and the people who live in Indonesia are fishing for Indonesian fish fishes. Um, it's not like you can choose to go someplace thousands of miles away to go fishing. But people do make the choice all the time between different types of fish that they have access to um, for what fish they decide that they're going to catch and how much those fish are worth. So a lot of times people make those choices between um, what fishes are more valuable and what fishes are more easily um, populated or easy to catch. So these are some awesome things to think about as you do this activity and definitely if you do this activity at home definitely share your experience with us. Um, we'd love to hear from you and uh, check us out projectpiaba.org. Thank you.